What is up? Two seconds. I'm like positioning. Positioning for success. How's it going? Got some new stream layout stuff going on. I don't know if you can see it. Hello, it's cold. I'm just need to put my hoodie on. Hello. I'm doing good. I'm doing very good. Just need to position. Oh, almost bumped my coffee. Hello, Glante. So I don't know how successful this will be, but I'm trying to get people to talk on the, uh, the Discord through the stream channel. As you can see, like on the stream, when, it, when you post in Discord, it will show up in the chat. So I won't be showing the chat per se, the Twitch chat on the stream. I will be showing the Discord chat, mainly because people will post things on there that we bring back into the stream. Um, I will not spill the coffee. Anywho, uh, let's see here. I'm just gonna be doing a lot of uh, planning type stuff. Oh, Clancy's here. Let's see. Planning stuff today. Uh, we'll also be looking at um, a file that one of the peeps sent me. Oh, I added leveling too to our Discord. So like as, as you continue your activity, you like character levels up and stuff for your profile. And I need music. I need my own music. Uh, before we get started, I'm just gonna do a uh, a shout out to. Um, let's see where he's at. It's like where's the where's the thing. Shout out to Dexter, who was asking some questions on my uh, on my YouTube channel in uh, in a different language. Don't worry about it. I got translator. I can figure it out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully my comment helped. We'll just keep keep on keeping on. Uh, if you could chat in the Discord, that would be awesome. But I'm not going to. I'll have both windows up. I'll just mainly be having, like, there's a chance I'll miss what you're saying. Uh, if it's in the the Twitch chat, so I don't I don't want to miss anything. But I'll still be looking at a Twitch chat, just not as direct. That you can see I got some new. Oh, I don't cameras flipped stuff over here. All those details, that's kind of cool. Oh, now that I'm... Mm, that's going to bug me. Hang on. Where you at, webcam? Bigger video. Transform. Boom. Fixed. All right. Aindow, uh, if you need a link, 
You'll see right above uh, Clancy's message, there's a link to the Discord. Cats testing. Oh, geez. Okay. I'm going to need to format this to be compact instead of cozy. That'd be amazing if you could post pictures in the chat window. Oh, that'd be, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, oh, guys, we're reverting. We're reverting back. Okay. So, Unreal. Where you at, Unreal? So today we'll just be doing some more focused stuff. Ah, <laughs> it's good to know that that's who you who you is. Building lights, huh? Nice, dude. Nice. Let's see. Oh. I I may regret putting this hoodie on. Now I'm getting warm. This window over here, and this one. You're not working. You better work on your essay, man. You can just listen to me. I can uh, help you through your writing with my silky smooth voice. to get the concept up too. Oh, so much setup. I should have done all of this earlier. further into the texturing stuff I'll probably go more with this kind of uh, darker approach with the with the light patterns and then we'll do some light stuff like this as well so what do you guys uh, I'll just ask you guys what do you guys think about uh, this stuff. That picture does look familiar, doesn't it, uh, Clancy? Uh, so, what do you guys think? Should I be, should I, like, build build this guy out? Get him all sculpted up? Should I block out some more things? Leave that up to you guys. Uh, should I figure out the, the pattern on the ground, which probably won't be as much like detailed 3D, but we can get we can get some things figured out with that. We can look at we can do the stairs. What are you guys thinking? I'm gonna be looking around as I'm trying to solve things in my head. to add the concept up too. You guys got your own music going and stuff? I don't want like weird lulls of, of quiet. Stairs would be fun to watch. That's not really the first time I've ever heard that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man. Stairs, you know. Let's see. So we got stairs here. 
They've got a little lip there. They've got the little break here, chipping. This interesting pattern that goes across. Man, everything's so soft. Like it's just been weathered to the extreme. We could prep, uh, we could probably get the stairs prepped and start in ZBrush by the end of the stream and stuff. Because I'll, I'll want to break it all apart to get the pieces that I'm thinking. I think, we'll see. Okay, I'll, I'll do the stairs and then maybe uh, afterwards, after we get the stairs done, maybe we can look at, if we do this base piece, that's like the bottom of this, then we can do this, this pillar. So that'll be our, that'll be our timeline. So we'll do the stairs. Once we get that good, uh, we'll just throw a temp. We'll just throw this material on it, call it good, and then we'll move on to these guys. Then this. That way we have some type of a, a timeline on on things. So I don't want you guys to just be like, oh man, he's he's always just sitting there working on this. We can kind of go everywhere, really. So we'll we'll go with this approach as well. Should be cool. All right, sip of coffee, warm the fingers up, and it's, then we're, we're on. How was you guys this weekend? Oh, Clancy, you might find this interesting too. Well, all you guys might find this interesting. I should be doing a stream on, uh, the division channel soon, uh, building out, like propping a scene in the division. So that should be cool. Okay, let's do this. file I'll uh, keep you guys updated on when that's about to go down and all that stuff I'll probably even see if I can uh, get it vaunted or something uh, I think that's the URL I always forget Stairs, where you at, stairs? this file I think it is oh yeah at some point we're gonna have to make some little statues too that's gonna be pain in the ass because I am not familiar with that very well there it is Beer, what's going on? Edge extrude, hello, chaos, hi. Ank. Ank. Hi. Dude, you're the one making the difference, man. I'm like that much closer to my hard drive. I have, uh, what do I have? I have 19 gigs left. I don't know how, because uh, the other day I had four. 
I must have deleted some games or something because it was stressing me out. <laughs> okay, so let's we just solve a piece of this stair. We should be good. What's happening? Hello. Welcome to the stream. started on the uh, environment creation you can always check the uh, YouTube link as well uh, I've, I'm posting all of the past broadcasts on there which is nice for people just like you who have missed missed wherever we're at Just do that locally. have any moto questions or anything like that or just basic basic uh, just 3d questions thrown down okay so we're not gonna care too much about this back area you know what no we'll, we'll care we'll care because you guys need to, to know what is good and bad the good and the bad and the evil and the reckless. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Or the weird, if you've watched that. It's good stuff. Speaking of westerns, Red Dead, anyone? Red Dead? Super stoked. Super stoked. Oh, God. not updated to 10.2 um, but there's some some nice improvements uh, the mesh fusion is really nice now the viewport uh, real-time materials they've got like a in here if you right click on the shader I think you can you can create you can't in this one but you can create unreal materials uh, no actually maybe you can and add new custom materials there's a unreal material here you can see uh, you can set up your materials just how you would in unreal like you add your your layers for roughness and, and your albedo and all that stuff and when you export the FBX it will create the shader on a basic level 
the way you set it up in Moto. So there's some work, nice workflow stuff that's that's coming out. Okay, now that we have this stair, we're gonna do this. Drink our coffee. Got the stair piece. Get it into position. Let's get. Uh, let's actually. We'll get an idea for what it's gonna look like here real fast before I start prepping stuff for ZBrush. I think what we'll do. Oh, Whoa, what is happening? Hang on. Are snapping at. I want grid snapping. Oh, I just accepted that. I see what I'm doing. There we go. That works. Dude, man, what's going on? like want to make sure it's not too noisy there's a bit of a worry for these details down here being so tight it's like you get back here you see how they're aliasing that's like you want to try and avoid noises like that which um, uh, in, un in Unreal they kind of have avoided it let me see if I can simulate simulate this I just stretch this out like that. Say so these are the stairs, right? I think they've gotten rid of it by using a temporal AA, which is like a just a visual smoothing like a aliasing solution. And still I think I have temporal AA off. It's not that big of a deal. 
But you have to, you know, you have to watch out for that stepping. It just turns into like crawly noise. So we'll have to. I can already tell just based off of like these these bottom edge details that that might be might be too much. Good. Right. So what you want to do to try and alleviate some of that problem is just make these wider. They're still too small, I think, but we'll see. soften it out in ZBrush quite a bit. Strength, what's up? How you doing? Okay, let's um, take this piece and paste it. Now we need to get these these breaks in between here. So we're going to actually export out this piece probably at like that length. And then we'll just scale it and skew it in, in ZBrush. This uh, this mesh as the block out. Atmospheric. Um, one of the uh, one of the things in the new Moto is uh, controlled angle on the bevel profile shader. That thing's super powerful. Like you can see how. Uh, let me hide this one. So this is all super low poly, right? right get some wire and stuff going on here. This one's super low poly. If you render it at a uh, full. see there's a nice little bevel going on on there that's happening in the uh, shader so if you go into the properties of the shader what are we at here I think it's maybe it's this one yeah okay so you can change the bevel I think I've showed this in another stream but you see how like all the steps are beveling and look, these aren't even welded and they're beveling between each other and where they meet the wall. See that? That is a super big deal. The reason that is so amazing is you could technically take this mesh 
duplicate it, unwrap it, and then have it look at this one with the bevel shader on it, and then bake it, and you'll have your bevels, and you never had to make a high volley at all. Just like, like think about that for a second. Now the really interesting part is the update they added is like, so right now you only have uh, a rounded edge width of uh, 20, like a control there, right? They're adding a angle control so that it won't apply a bevel profile until it goes beyond a certain angle. So I think default right now is 40 degrees. You could make it not bevel unless it's uh, higher than that. Or you could have it ignore. Yeah, there's all types of cool stuff you can do with it. Super, super powerful. Okay, so we're gonna bring in the block, block out mesh, which is this guy. Actually, we need to make the document a bit bigger. Okay, get this guy. I'm going to um, where is it? And we'll just append a shape, select that shape, import, and then we'll point at the, uh, the stair set. Let's make sure that it came in okay. Everything is shading okay. Let's smooth it and see if it's all kind of crazy. Whoops. And if you undo it, it'll go back to the uh, original uh, shape that it was. Okay, let's uh, let's turn some wireframe on here. Oh, oh this is gonna bug me. I'm trying to remember the name of the. Modeling tool. Ben, what's up, man? Quilla Willie. How are your socks? How are your socks doing? Are they nice and soft? Z modeler, that's what I'm looking for. Z modeler. This is not going to work for what I want it to do. That's okay. We'll just do something else with it. So we'll just see what I'm what I'm trying to get away from is see how this has got this edge and this edge and yeah they've all got their edges. Kind of want to get away from that, but it's all good. So basically what we want to do right now is we want to position these. In a way where we can use them over and over. You hold, hold control when you're using the uh, move tool. It'll duplicate it off and just mask it out. You can uh, split. Split unmasked. Pressing N, you can look at your subtools. So I can do that. Super nice. Super nice. I'm 
I think how I want to split this up. the discord chat thing is going to work out i don't feel like the the splitting of the activity and the the way that it's confusing if that makes sense whoa a weird ass song just came on super weird okay let's actually Transform. type of details we get out of something this low. So I lowered the uh, the Dynamesh count to like 0.5 million. So we should be sitting at about 500,000 instead of like the usual like 1.8 or something like that. For the scale that we're working at, this will probably work just fine. So I mean, that's gonna be like that big. That should be all right. Taking a, a cue from uh, Fear in chat. We're just going to make two of these and then we're going to um, duplicate them around and use those. So we'll do the basic, the basic detailing. Oh, yeah, and we'll, we'll smooth that out too. So we can make this pretty blurry before we chip it up. So that's fine. to blur the top one. This trim, uh, this trim smooth chipping brush, it's, I feel like you don't get enough control unless you uh, start lowering the uh, strength of it. like a pet peeve of mine so this and this are almost the same size so you start to get this kind of fake feel
And yeah, I'm doing this with a, a mouse. It's because the idea is that I, I won't be doing very intensive sculpting. Never know though. are so quiet tonight. Uh, the Trim Smooth brush is a standard brush, so I have saved it with uh, this mask here, and I've renamed it to like uh, Chipping Trim Smooth 1. Um, but if you press the uh, comma key, you bring this guy up, uh, you go to Brush, there's Trim, and then it's right here on the very, very bottom. It's, uh, Bottom right, trim smooth border. There's a bunch of other trims in here. I, I should probably play with them to see what they do. Because, I mean, they might actually work better than, you know, because people use, people use sculpting tools differently. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? So that's like uh, this this type of chipping is uh, nondescript. So it's pretty, it's that little detail, but it's not like, um, it doesn't make that piece stick out as like iconic. You know, like um, when you have like a tileable texture um, and you see that, that one brick or whatever that always sticks out every time that guy breaks the illusion, right? Breaks the tiling illusion. Or breaks the illusion that it's it's unique. So the best thing to do is, uh, if you're going to be reusing this piece a lot, or say, what is it? Let's see here. Say I'm gonna duplicate it up, right? And move it back it's important that it does not look like the one below it. It's probably also important that it's not lined up the same. Oh, I almost used, <laughs> I almost moto controls. this then maybe we dupe it off this one here oops oh look at this so if you move this and hold shift you're skewing like this, right? If you hold Alt, it tries to do like a soft. Look at that. Whoa. There's another one that I was trying to, where is it? It's not that one. And that one's cool though. If the, if the point is here and you hold alt to do the soft, you can do some like weird uh, curve stuff like this. So like if you needed it to scoop up like that, obviously this is kind of weird, right? How it pinches. Um, but 
dude, it's it's cool for like subtle tweaks. Is it scale? Is that no? Oh, that's weird. Thought it was move. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, I'll turn the wireframe on for this so you can see what's happening. So if you press Alt, so click the origin of the uh, this gizmo tool and hold Alt, you can like change the length of it. And all it's doing is smushing everything into this plane. So it's just going, which can be really helpful if, say, you just want to I guess I need to stretch this out anyways, but like if you need this to go here, then you need to dupe this here. Oops. But you need to uh, cut it off here. I mean you can do you can do trims, you can Oh man, it's awesome. But this I like this because you can get really it's like slice measuring. Uh, why is it scaling in two axes? Or axi, hang on here. Let's. We will do this. We will duplicate. I need to save this too. Okay, so we've duplicated it. This is our piece. So scaling. I mean, why is it scaling like that? So like if I go and I scale this way. It's all dependent on what you're clicking on. Like see if I, so if I drag this out, right? Let's say I drag it out from this corner to this corner. Hold shift so it's straight. It'll snap to these words. You can uh, click this thing in the middle, and if you move up and down, wait, how we? I was like, wait, how did we do that? Now I'm all confused. Hang on. So I was just doing a, that is super weird. So grabbing the center, scales up and down. Whoa, hang on here. That's another thing about this tool is it gets super jarring sometimes. You're like, how the hell is, what's happening? There we go. Okay, so <laughs> so if you're grabbing the center, it goes up and down like this. If you grab the right side, it scales to the uh, this point. If you grab the other side, it scales to the other point. It's like welcome to Confuse World. So scale, yeah, it's really weird, man. Oh, that's if you hold alt. So grabbing the uh, outside circle, 
is actually just moving those points. Well, I'm trying to figure out what that button was. Anyways, yeah, gizmo tool, super weird. The transpose tool, rather. Uh, but the reason, the reason it's looking at a, the reason it'll scale in two different directions is because this is the origin of the scale. Let's see what this right here is the origin of the scale. So anything that's happening on the outside gets, gets mirrored. Not necessarily mirrored. I don't, it's so hard to explain, but like everything that's happening on the outside of it will happen to the other side of that center point. So if you want it to scale from this side over here, you do that, right? It'll This will stay because you've snapped the original point to there. And over here, you can scale. You'll scale that way. The other thing is these, these guides here are really nice. So like you could be in 3D space, right? And you're, you're grabbing this. Let's go with the move tool so you can see clearer. So even though I'm in perspective, it's nice I can grab this point and then hold shift and just move it in and out like this. But uh, if for any reason I need to be moving it up and down, I can just click this and now the transpose tool is up. And you see the, the reason uh, this is move, right? And I'm moving the top but it's moving below this point as well. So this is zero. Anything outside of zero also gets affected by this movement. So if you wanna just squish it down, you need to be actually starting at that point, moving down. It takes some getting used to, but man, it's, I like it. I like it. A little confusing, but it's, I think once you get the hang out of it, it's really good. This guy. Polygroups, where you at? There you is. Yeah, it reads. It's it's very strange. I don't know, man. I think we're gonna go back to the other chat as well. Gonna turn this on and then turn this. So that one's on and the other one. Oh, there we go. Yes. I'll, I'll leave the stream channel in Discord up just in case anyone has anything to say about the stream or they have a question, they can drop it in that channel. That way it doesn't get lost in the text quickly. Jopi, what's up? Mup gooey. Mup gooey. How you doing? So we're gonna try and get rid of some of this, this geo. Yeah, I'm just gonna switch back. I don't like the, there's a weird uh, disconnect between like what, what's going on and yeah. No worries. Oh God. Pure mistake there. 
So I don't do a uh, Dynamesh with subtools hidden. If things are hidden, the Dynamesh gets all weird. So we're actually going to need to uh, split. Group split. All right, there we go. Go to this one. Good deal. Clean this one up, and then we will move on to just adding all of the stairs up so that we can keep going. So this one's now been cleaned up. Just trip this one up a bit. I try to be pretty active in that Discord though, so if you guys have any questions or you have things you want me to look at, we can go in there. Uh, you guys can go in there and you can leave stuff and then just talk about it. We'll talk about it, man. It'll be cool. Okay, so we got this piece. Yep, yep. Actually, I'm going to do this. for me. Okay. Actually gonna repair some of this. So it's not the same. so jarring to think like this. What the heck did my Nightbot just say? <laughs> There's like no links in there. Cool. It's cool. I have no idea. I'll have to go in and edit that. Oh, I'm listening to the sickest piano music right now. Okay, so we'll probably stick with this set. Um, mainly because it looks like there's some details that are happening down here. Um, let's actually, we'll, we'll finish, let's see here, we'll finish this set, uh, this row. And then 
uh, we'll just dupe the stairs up. <laughs> Revolution. I bet those uh, those triple dots on the end, it was like, uh, maybe it wasn't allowed to... <laughs> Pesky humans. I knew it. I knew there were duplicates. See these ones? Spies. Evo, what's up? Hello. Die one one. I don't know if that's how you say it, but hello, welcome. All right, so these ones have been merged. These ones need to get merged. This one's a dupe too. What is this? Spies. Oh, that's what's going on. Ha. Ah. Hi, bro, back. Bro, what's going on? All right, so we got three stair sets. I think that may be good enough to get going on some things. I'm looking for my Wacom wire. Where are you? We're just going to keep going. Okay, so the goal here is to make these stairs. Is 
The other thing I noticed is uh, this guy is not dynamished. That's cool. So we're going to do that really fast here. So instead of just blurring the whole thing, I'm kind of just doing this non-uniformly. That way you get a little bit more of an organic shape. See how it's like blurrier there, but sharper there. You may think I'm bullshitting and I might be bullshitting, but variety. So let's actually look at the interaction between this guy and this guy. Search this one real quick, hide that stuff. So where do these meet? It's like a relationship. Just gonna make it gonna make that stuff fit together. It's uh, probably the most uh, dating tips you're gonna get from me. Relationships, guys, make them fit. Make them fit. If you need to uh, get through there, you can. If you ghost, if you go transparent and then turn ghost off, it's, you can uh, sculpt without this uh, the other mesh blocking you, which is pretty nice. You like that read? <laughs> These two bricks are in love, man. These two stone pieces, they've seen things together. to tell a story together that's that's the what I'm trying to say seller phantom what is going on hello welcome to the stream Visceral, yo, yo, man. Thanks for the, thanks for the uh, host, man. Oh, dude, the stream section on our station is amazing. If you stream, uh, the only the way you get into that is you go to our station. There's a setting you can turn on in your profile, and then it, just in the name of your Twitch stream, you just put hashtag uh, art station, and it will automatically put you in there. 
It's super awesome. I'm looking at uh, brushes here, seeing what we can do. How's this one work? Whoa, what is going on there? Okay, so we don't want that one. That one's kind of cool. There's some crazy ones you can do. Like, um, I really like. Thanks for the follow, man. It is much appreciated, Mr. One. So, like, if I do this. Right. And then uh, I think there's a brush in here. Where's it at? Not the hammering, it's not the extreme polish. Rock noise. Whoa. Adds noise to your, to where you, like I basically have a mask where I don't want it to. Yeah, so, no, 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 no. Look at that, when you scale it up, it does some awesome, like that is freaking sweet. Such a good brush. You have to be careful though, see on that scale, look what it's doing to this side. <laughs> that's why I say you, that's why I'm saying you got a mask. You do this. Well, that didn't work at all. It's because I got perspective on. Get just the top there. Do that. And clear it, and then there it is. Delicious. We'll, we'll save that stuff for later, though. What I'm looking for right now is I need a brush for cutting some nice little lines. I think it's going to be this one. Yeah. I don't like that long one, though. Uh, it is super important to look at stone wear patterns, like uh, how stone chips and breaks. If you look here, you see how these two are interacting. Um, you've got a chip on the left here, but then this one's not chipped. Uh, usually that means that a, um, on here. usually that means Usually that tells you that there was four supplied to one side and not the other. Like one one gave and the other one wasn't part of that that transaction of giving. <laughs> um, it is quite rare that you get uh, oops, damage like this this area where it's it's almost mirrored on both sides. So there's a little bit of eyeballing. But uh, once you look at rocks long enough, man, you start getting super used to it. Yeah, that uh, that brush is the orbs brush. How you doing, hostile? Yo, man. We're just uh, we're just doing some uh, Z brush damage action. This thing here is bugging me a bit.
That that looks that looks a little better. See now that now there's stuff happening asymmetrically. Is that a word? Asymmetrically. Anyways, the damage is asymmetrical now, which is visually it tends to be better. Let's focus in on this area here. Remember to keep in mind too that you're going to be reusing the stair somewhere else, right? So you might not want to go too detailed. Like what we're looking at right now is that. I'm going to build these three sets and then we'll just dupe them up. chipping this inside piece up here is you need to be able to see you need to be able to see the interaction between these two being two separate bricks or two separate pieces of stone right or else like you separating it out is like there's no reason to do it so just kind of that and then when you turn the other one on see now that now it's visually it's much more interesting where they meet good old stereo 10203 how does that green focus area work okay so think about it like uh, selections cut that YouTube channel link I need to uh, I think if I do that, that link works. That's the link. Apologies for the uh, ma, uh, bot. He's like on his own. Okay, so we have an object, right? A single subtool. If you hold down control and you, you paint on the mesh, you're masking. If you hold down control and drag in the background, you'll erase it. If you do this and then instead of dragging in the background, you click, it'll invert it. I'm just going to run you through all these really fast. Uh, click to invert again. If you click anywhere inside of this mask once or outside of the mask once but on the mesh, you'll blur it. If you hold down Alt and then do that, you're actually sharpening. So you can Control or Alt. Um, we'll just Control, Marquee, select the background to deselect everything. So that's masking. So if I do that and I sculpt the area that's masked will be untouched uh, this can be super helpful can be it is super helpful um, okay now the green one so same way if you control and you paint and you marquee select the background you hold shift to see that uh, where it says plus mask on the uh, brush I'm like pointing on the screen like you can see me pointing at the screen Uh, the command, so the one that's auto playing is not a command. It's like just an auto, auto command that happens on the background. I'll have to go and change it myself. So if you hold down control, you see it says plus mask. If you hold shift, now you get this little uh, lasso and a marquee. Uh, and you'll see up here, there's a, I'm going with marquee. When you drag, now it's green. If I go shift, or, oh, I think it'll hold. Okay, it'll hold. So control and shift gives you a green marquee. What happens is when you let go, everything not inside of that gets hidden on a, a poly count level. So I can do that and see it's only showing me the polys that were selected inside of that green. Similar to uh, doing this. And you know how when you click on the background, the invert? 
you click on the background with the same hotkey, control shift click, it'll re show everything. Hint, hint. Um, the other thing that's really nice, so if you uh, control shift, highlight, hide everything. Do the control shift highlight in the background, it will invert the hidden. I am using ZBrush with a mouse. That tells you how much, uh, how often I use ZBrush. You don't know, man. You don't know the struggle. <laughs> anyway, that's the uh, the gist of it. You're not alone. Ho ho. I mean, there's a time and place. If I'm gonna be doing this all day at work or something, get in the way, come out. I actually, um, was it a few days ago at work, I think it was last Friday, I just kind of switched to uh, Wacom only. So I'm using our editor, our works editor, Snowdrop. I'm using it with Wacom and Moto controls in editor. And then uh, when I'm modeling in Moto, I'm also using a Wacom. Ooh, that felt, that looks, that felt good. What is that? How did that happen? It's like I, I squiggled up. Interesting. Okay. Kind of learned a new brush thing. Oh no, it feels bad, man. That's horrible. But yeah, you, you can hear me clicking like crazy or what? Furious clicking. Yeah, those happy accents, man. Getting all Bob Ross up in here. I'm trying to figure out how that happens. So if I start on this plane and then go under and cut and then go back up and cut like that. Ooh, that's okay. With the right strokes with the right folks, we can do that. We can do some nice, oh man, okay, yeah, that's, that's the hot sauce. So you're basically just cut into the, the plane that you're working on by pulling up. One little tiny one right there. Yeah. I don't like that one. So now the nice thing about this brush, because it's looking at the uh, normal plane of what you're what you originally clicked on when you go, you can like if you do say this and then you don't like that, you just invert it and it will pull everything up to the plane that you click on. So you can just kind of, it's almost like erasing. You're just pulling all the verts that are down up to the plane that you started on.
Because those two are pretty much had their, their pass. After we get these all duped up, then I'll, I'll take one more pass and add like two or three unique details that separate them out from each other. Oh, that's actually, this is going to be interesting. So, let's see if I can do this right. This is a good example, I think, if it, if it goes how it's playing in my head. If you have that, right, and you can see that that's a direct duplicate of the one below it. To be able to use the, what is it, the move tool. Let's center it here. Is this going to work how I'm thinking it's going to work? It might not. We'll see. Nope. Crap, how, how is this? So I'm trying to envision it in my head. Is it this? No. Aha, okay, do this, get that center point there, hold alt, and now you can shift this around. Like how nice is that? Oh, delicious. Oh wow, I duped that other, that's how that was happening, okay. Let me make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Oh, did I just freaking delete? Hang on. I just did that. You guys, just did that. Just make sure everything is where I'm expecting it to be. So those are split. These are there. This one is there. That's hilarious. Okay, well, gonna fix that. You cannot undo a delete. Uh, deleting of a subtool is not undoable. to love it. It's all good though. Gotta roll with the punches, man. differences or they're like duplicates ah. don't ever forget to save kids funny too because I just need to delete that one because that one I don't need right now it's just these
The other thing that's really nice, uh, so you know how I was doing this, where you can hide stuff. If you run a uh, auto groups or you've grouped uh, all your, you've poly grouped your, your information. See, these are different colors. You can do this, but you can do it on a, uh, instead of marking that one, you just control shift, click it, and it will hide everything except that one in the same sub tool. So it's like hiding your, it's hiding your sub tools. It's really nice. It's hiding your sub sub tools. If you wanna, if you wanna call it that. So and then this detail here and this detail here are very similar. So we're gonna get rid of that. People will probably never notice it. Just sprint, you know, when you when you're playing a game, you're just running right past this stuff. Probably never even notice there. So in the in the grander scheme of things, you just don't, it's whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, I guess I could just... I guess I could just use, like, the uh, the Z Modeler tool and just start building the pieces out from there. But it's all good. I should do an a episode on Z Modeler. That'd be crazy. Things, things insane. Just a quick... We'll save this. I'll give you a quick glance at it. Initialize. Turn all these down. All right, so we got this cube, right? Make poly mesh 3D. Press B Z for Z modeler. So I think it would be Z B Z M. And then you get this this tool where when you hit spacebar, you get all these options based on what you have selected. So you can see it's like selecting things. I can just start clicking, extrude, extrude, click this edge, add an edge loop. If I set alt, deletes edge loops, shift, I don't even know. No idea. Uh, bevel. Grab this edge and just bevel that. Bevel this. Dude, you just have to get used to it, right? And at any time, you can just press D and you can see the smooth version of it. You can just grab these and and this is this is a dynamic smooth. So this isn't even regular. Like you haven't committed to anything. Shift D will go back to the original low poly. There's some crazy things, man. Like if I extrude this up, uh, yeah, see I'm on, now my edge bevels all the time, so I need to do um, slide, what is this? Uh, this one will slide the edge. Uh, do nothing. Split. Look at that. I want to slide that one there, over there. Dude, the other crazy part is if you like, so if we do this, 
and you grab this edge and instead of extruding it out, you go the other way. Look at that. It deletes it. It's insane, man. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You can learn Zmodeler. I mean, it's just, it's learning what does what where, right? I'm all using Z modeler on that. Oh god, I'm like extruding a face somewhere in there, deep in the uh, deep in the Dynamesh code. Yeah, well, I don't know a Z modeler that well, man. I mean, what I just showed you is essentially the amount of knowledge I have on it. If that would work. Need more polys to do something like this. Yeah, best thing to do in ZBrush is just start, just start messing with it. You'll get something out of it. Whole thing's built, built out of happy accidents. I'm just gonna leave that. That's that's fine for me. Whoa, where did I go? Oh, there we are. This thing kind of feels like it's getting in my way. So you see how there's these little uh, these little nub things here? You should wonder how we should add those. Maybe in layers? New layer? Here you go. 
capacity. We do like um, probably clay, low intensity. Give it a uh, spherical alpha. Just do stuff like this. One reason you want to apply it like this is because then you get some pretty unique detail, right? And if you blur it with a low intensity, you kind of get a similar, similar aged, worn look. Questions is what's it look like from far away? Because then you're approaching that uh, that noise problem again that we were talking about earlier. What is going on? Oh, it's that edge because I'm using. Whoa! Blobs, guys, blobs. Sold. I'm not even recording into the uh, that's funny because you have to hit the record button here so if you click that now it's recording now everything that you do in here blah, 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 is part of this you can even go negative just delete that We'll come back to that later. That's some some added detail you don't really want to. I don't know. Any. Anyway, let's see where we're at here. down we'll save this before we go further the shit can get cray Ben's still in here I wonder if he's actually here oh this part's nice too if you uh so you know how you're so you go to your, your move tool, right? And then you start pulling out your transform tool. Uh, if you hold down control when you do it, you'll mask using the transforms tool. And then when you move, oh geez, hang on. What is going on? When you move this, you can actually move just the mask, the unmasked area. But you need to double, triple check that you're not moving a bunch of shit, because I just noticed, like, see that? What is that? Apparently I'm moving the whole back. Freaking jarring. So it can be really helpful. Like, I just need to close the gap here so that there's no, like, when you bake the normals, there's no ray cast that shoots through here and you get a, a empty normal. If you have hit shift, it'll invert it while you're doing this. We just we just want something like that. Just enough. Just enough to nudge it. 
There we go. So the other problem is you got to make sure you're doing it with all of your objects. See this? For some reason these these guys weren't getting nudged. I don't know why. Ben is kind of here. Kind of, a little bit. Okay, so we got these three. Might be time to dupe them up one more time. Let's see what we're looking at here. Merge down. Down. Let's do a ghost. Ghost. Uh, let's see here. Polic groups. Holy crap, the stream's almost over. It's almost 10. Oh, guys. Oh, guys. I need to uh, actually grab a file really quick. Made a bread loaf, it was interesting. Made me hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those so I can see oops <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, that's all I wanted. Oh, thank you.
going to save this and we're going to look at that other file for one of you guys for Andra I'm scared what I'm about to open. What if it's just like a giant like penis? That's all it is. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So you were asking some questions about the teeth area. That is gnarly, dude. I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever looked at something <laughs> in ZBrush like this. That is, uh, it's a little, it's a little terrifying. What was that? That was really weird. So let's just, we'll do, we'll do a lasso so we can. No, that is not what I wanted. There we go. I just want a lasso. Those are some eyeballs. Okay, so we're gonna go to the teeth. I need to see it. So yeah, that's all that's all one mesh. If you're getting um so if you're trying to sculpt this stuff, and you're getting a lot of this tearing. Uh there's there's a couple things you can do. Um so you can go into the brush. Where is it at? So surface, no. Curve. I'm trying to remember where it's at. Give me a second here. Back face mask. So in auto masking, turn the back face mask on. And that should help with your tearing issue. So see now you can it can uh, do things front and back and you should not have a problem. Dude, this is weird looking at, man. Uh, that blows me away that these are, is that for real? Okay, no, no. I was thinking that the teeth were actually part of the same. So that's his own. Good deal. Uh, how are you going to texture the stairs? Two normal, two normal maps and one tileable texture. Uh, so because I'm doing a unique normal, I will probably do uh, one UV set for the. It'll be like these guys. So if you look at these guys, let's open this up. Got this piece right. And if you open the uh, shader up, the shader has a, uh, well, it's an instance shader. Hang on here. I'm going to close this. So what you're, what you're seeing is this is the, uh, materials. This is the normal map. What I would say though is in production in a studio, you probably would go, it really depends. Like I think what they would do is they would have a normal map that's unique and then a tiling uh, detail normal and then a unique um, roughness map. And then also a a tiling albedo, a tiling roughness map to that, and a tiling, I guess that's where the detail normal would come in. You wouldn't have a tiling normal map for it because you have a detail normal. But let me see if I can, so this is the main shader, and all I'm doing is I have an albedo uh, material map, which is basically um, metallic channel, which we don't really need. I can just put a blank in there. Um, a roughness channel, which is the green channel, and then the red channel is the ambient occlusion. 
So if I, I think I can just open this up and start, and just turn all these off, right? So red channel, that's my ambient occlusion. Green channel is my roughness, I think I said. Yeah. And then the blue channel is metalness, which is black. So maybe I shouldn't plug that in and should just plug in a uh, something else, like a like a color a color lookup, so I don't have to pay for it another thing. I guess I'm already paying for it in here. What else? I'm at home, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and then I have a detail normal map. So I've got albedo a Material map is what we would call my work. It's just packed channels. Then I had a normal map that's unique. And then a tiling detail normal. And I've exposed that so that you can change the uh, tiling amount per asset instance. So like if I go in here and I look at this guy, I can just go in and uh, where are we at here? I, did I set it up on this one? I don't even. I don't even know what's happening. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah. So here's the shader. So here's the detail normal. You can see in the back. I can turn this up and down. I can turn it really high up. You get that finer detail. I like to see it a bit. I think right now I have it at seven. You just, yeah. So, and I have that exposed, that way if I have objects that are smaller, like this one, I can can change the scaling so that the detail normal. What size are these current textures? I think these are only a 1024. Actually, no, you know what? Yeah, they're 1024. Which is, I mean, for this detail, like that's about as high as you'd want to go. If you want higher fidelity than this, then I would suggest doing a layered material shader. Constant, thanks, Fear. Yes. So if you're in, um, if you're in here, I'm hitting spacebar because I'm thinking. Ugh. Let's go over here. Constant. So you can drag in a constant, and just. Give it a value of zero and just plug it into the uh, metallic. That's the same as having a blank metallic channel. <laughs> yeah, I can right click too. You guys are you guys are brutal. So if I right click, constant, hit enter, hold C. Oh, not hold C. So if you tap C, you get a comment. It needs to be spacebar, man. It needs to be spacebar. Spacebar is so much more intuitive. Or holding down the one key and clicking, or the two key gives you two variable, or a three key and a click gives you a three variable. Oh, I'm not even talking about Snowdrop, man. Just if you hit the spacebar in Substance Designer. Uh, any advice in getting okay, so this will be my last question and then I will head out of here. So any advice on uh, on getting work as a 3D modeler out of university? So apply everywhere, right? Well first not even apply everywhere. Build a portfolio. And when you say 3D modeler, are you meaning like an environment artist? Like so, environment artists, props artists, character artists, weapons artists. Um, there's some others. Like a vanity artist, I guess. There's people that make clothing for games where like you're always swapping clothing off, off and on between the character. That's usually handled by the uh, by the character artist as well. So yes, environment artists. So portfolio, apply and network. So you're being in here is really good because you're talking to me, you're talking to all these people. Someone gets like a really good spot uh, at a studio and they really like your stuff, they'll like promote you to their team when they're hiring and then bam, you have an interview. 
lighting is important. Yes, uh, you want to do lighting too. So I would suggest picking one or the other. Um, if you want to go into lighting and environment art, I mean, it's weird because you, you kind of light now as well is as far as environment artists go. But um, yeah, have a portfolio, have good demonstration of hard surface modeling, uh, understanding of physically based materials, uh, one scene at least of like showing your understanding of composition and lighting and um, apply everywhere. Don't be afraid of internships. Try to avoid internships that are unpaid. If your country of, of residence doesn't uh, cover that type of uh, living. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, don't even worry about like just shotgun apply. Apply to all studios that interest you. Someone followed me. <laughs> Who was that? Thanks for the follow. Oh, it was you. It was you. So environment artists and prop artists are quite interesting. Fear is a prop artist. And lighting, yes, fear is right. Lighting is a very narrow field. Um, and I think it's only getting... I think it's staying pretty narrow. It's, it's not really expanding all that much. Um, so an environment artist tends to do like propping of the props the prop artist made as well as preparing request assets that get sent to the props team to create. So I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna put a box here. That box is going to be a table. I got the metrics out, everything's good. Send to the props team. They update it, make it look cool, and then it comes back. I sync on Perforce, which is like our like it's like the industry standard for uh, file management across the studio. I sync when I open my, my world I'm working on, the box is now a table and it looks awesome because Fear is a, a sick artist. <laughs> um, but yeah, I apply, 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 and don't, don't get sad because uh, you, will, you will experience a lot of turndowns no matter how long you've been in the industry. I mean, obviously it goes down as you've been in the industry longer, right? But you won't, uh, you won't always succeed. So there's that. Anyway, okay. I think that will do it for me. And uh, I will see you guys on Thursday, the same time. And uh, yeah, you can follow the the discord you can follow this channel you can follow the youtube the discord is really good especially if you have questions like that because there's a couple of us that are already in the industry and we're just we just help when we can when we see the message if we're not like crazy busy jada thanks thanks seller you guys are dope you guys are the dopeness you make this type of streaming super fun Can, I can teach teach things. Uh, here's this, and I will leave you. I will leave you with that. All right, guys. We'll check you later. Wait, what? What's Kappa? What did I Kappa? Hang on. Before I go, I guess Kappa. Man, rebuilding the lighting back end? I don't know about that. That, that sounds like a nightmare. Hostel. Hostel. K.
Kappa. Kappa.